All right. All right, so I guess we should get into it. Uh, this is one last thing. If you are not subscribed to our YouTube, we recommend doing so. Uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you want to get notified when we go live for our community calls and possibly other events in the future, uh, make sure to turn on the notification bell. And finally, as always, this uh, anything we discuss on this call is not financial advice. And should always do your own research about anything we discuss. Uh, and if, uh, you know, if there's anything not clear to you or you're not sure about something, come and talk to us. Ask us questions in our Discord. We're happy to help. But anything that we say is not financial advice. So just keep that in mind. I think we gave some pretty good financial advice last last time, though, about not buying at ETH POW. <laughs> I took all the <laughs> advice and I used it. And <laughs> well. <laughs> All right, so there's occasional financial advice, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but not this time, OK, guys? All right, so the biggest news uh, of this uh, community call and this newsletter is uh, about the referral program updates. Um, if you're not using the referral program, this might not really be big news to you. But uh, at the same time, if you're not using the program, maybe you should think about it and check out the referral program. That, uh, the, the latest version of it that's that's uh, coming out very soon. Andrew, can you give us some information about that? Yeah. So first off, I mean, we've had a bunch of changes to the referral program over the past few months, but this one we hope to be uh, the final major update, which is exciting. Um, but in general, what we're what we have attempted to do is align it with our new tokenomics plan, uh, which means incentivizing the locking of VE perp. And so what that means is in order to participate moving forward, this is both for referral partners and referred traders, you have to hold at least 10 B perps. Um, and you can utilize you know, our website to actually um, lock those in. Um, so that's one key and a big change. But then the second one is for those who are currently utilizing our program, there is going to be a migration period, which will open up um, I believe next week, um, and it's very important, it's all posted on on our Twitter right now and all of our Discord, but it's very important that you take advantage of that migration period so that you can um, receive the rewards, or, or sorry, there's no actual uh, breakup of your rewards. So if you're a current partner, if you're familiar with the program, you've been using it, it's really important that you take a look at uh, what we posted so that you can migrate your funds over to the new process. And if you're a new perspective uh, referral partner, then I highly recommend you read through it because it's a very lucrative opportunity for anybody who is looking to grow a following in uh, in crypto. Or if you have a following already that uh, is into trading. Yeah. Yeah, this is a great, good opportunity. Uh, and if you do have any questions, you know, after reading, reading through it, welcome to come to our Discord. Uh, just you know, ask away in the general channel, or if you want to discuss a little more privately, you can open a ticket and, uh, you know, somebody will answer you or I'll, I'll put you in touch with Andrew, who will be happy to in answer fact, any questions. we will answer and Lee and I will talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> that is right. All right, so next up. Uh, we have a couple of uh, sort of minor updates to the protocol in the last uh, short while. The first of which is this partial liquidation threshold. And basically what this does is it increases the amount of liquidation bonus available to liquidators when they're liquidating a position that is a notional value of 100, uh, 100 USD or lower. So for very small positions in the past, uh, it could be, it could uh, we could be in a situation where the bonus is so small that the gas fee could actually be similar or more than the bonus. So in that case, obviously, liquidators would just ignore it and not be interested in liquidating, which uh, could leave the user with a bad debt, which uh, could be a nasty surprise. So uh, yeah, we've updated this so that now if the position is very small, $100 uh, or lower of notional value, um, the amount uh, of bonus available for liquidators is they sort of received the maximum available uh, amount instead of previously uh, some portion of that would go to the insurance fund. 
Uh, so if you're running a liquidator uh, and you're curious about this or you want to know more information, uh, let us know on Discord. We'll be happy to answer any questions. And the next one is the bad debt settlement. So actually, um, this is slightly more complicated, but essentially, uh, when we first rolled out the PERP v2 uh, about almost a year ago now, uh, basically what happened, if there's any bad debt, it was basically stored by the clearinghouse uh, and not, you know, when there's bad debt occurring, normally the insurance fund will send funds to the clearinghouse to make sure that that bad debt will be covered. And that mechanism was not fully developed, not fully implemented. Uh, so all the bad debts were just basically held by the clearinghouse with any, without any reimbursement from the insurance fund. Now, this is not really a problem uh, because all of the fee income was also held by the insurance fund or the clearinghouse rather. So what this update does is basically um, finalizes the mechanism between these two, the insurance fund and the clearinghouse so that the funds, uh, if there's a bad debt, will flow from the insurance fund to the clearinghouse. Um, basically what this does is it makes the on-chain accounting more clear and brings us one step closer to fee sharing. Uh, fee sharing with stakers relies on knowing what exactly, uh, how much money is in the insurance fund uh, in relation to the open interest on the protocol. So in order to know that in a sort of uh, provable way that's on chain, we needed to sort of finalize this mechanism. And so that's done. We're that much closer to sh uh, sharing fees with stakers, which is very exciting. All we need now basically is to wait for the insurance fund to continue growing until it reaches that threshold and the USDC fee sharing will begin. So that's super exciting. All right, moving on. Um, now partnerships and marketing news. We are, in the last couple of weeks, we saw a lot of activity in the Optimism Quest. Uh, so, Leonie, can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, sure. So, I think last time we already shared the Optimism Quests. Um, like, Optimism is the layer two that Perp V2 is on. And they have this initiative to kind of like help people explore the ecosystem where you can um, do different quests and try out the different protocols that are on Optimism. And for Perpetual Protocol, the quest is to um, trade with a position size of at least 100 USDC. And then you can claim this um, QTV NFT. And we give out an additional reward, another NFT, um, this Perp Shark NFT that we announced in the tweet there. Yeah, so if you haven't gotten either NFT, you should definitely check it out. The process is pretty straightforward uh, and it's a pretty cool NFT. And once you get the first one from Optimism, you're eligible to get the second one. So definitely check that out. All right. And the next thing is uh, a community event that we held recently. We've actually been working on increasing the amount of community events that we have. Uh, as you probably know, we had some poker tournaments and this sort of, uh, I don't know if this is this, uh, anyway, another community event that we were working on is this Gardic phone. Uh, Houston, are you able to tell us a bit about this? Yeah, it was a fun event. Now this has already happened already. If it happened uh, last week, we actually had a couple of sessions. One of our community members, uh, Axer, he actually ran the event and it was a lot of fun. So it was a good turnout uh, for the, we had again, two sessions. Basically, think of it as a Pictionary game, but on the, but sort of played on a mobile device or you know, kind of on on a telephone screen. Um, so yeah, it was a it was a good it was a good you know good vibes in the bear market. That's kind of what I, what I, what I think it was uh, it was about. And uh, we'll talk more more about it later. But we have another event coming this coming Friday. So if you missed this past event, and just hold on, we'll talk more about the next event very very soon. Awesome, sounds good. I heard uh, during the Gardic phone event there was some like unexpected, uh, unexpected things going on with people who might not have exactly knew what the, it was all about. So you never know in these events uh, there can be some crazy things that happen. So definitely check it out. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Weird things happen on the internet, but you know <laughs> we have prizes too. So you come up for the prizes and you know check out the <laughs> the oddities that have, that happen <laughs> anytime you do live events. 
Sounds good. That's one thing I love about the internet for sure. You never know what you're going to find. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And moving on, um, we recently had a Masari mainnet. Uh, Leonie, can you give us a little bit of info about that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, Masari organized the conference uh, mainnet 2022 in New York. I think it was taking place end of September, so like one or two weeks ago. And our co-founder, Yen Wen, he joined the panel where you can see the picture of and chatted about like the next generation of DeFi derivatives and bonds. And they actually uploaded the recording to YouTube yesterday. So I will share the link to rewatch it in the chat here. Yeah, you can check that out on our blog, Medium blog. Uh, that has the up-to-date information. The newsletter, of course, once you receive it, we can no longer update it. <laughs> but the blog is updated. So I guess this year at Masari was, I didn't hear any news at all. So I guess it's that means it was a little less uh, dramatic than last year with the SEC following people around. Yeah, I wasn't there, but I heard of no major incidents like that. OK. Sounds good. All right, so coming up, uh, yeah, we'll move on to upcoming events. So we already discussed the, the new referral program, and that'll be rolling out very soon, uh, October 13th. So you still have time to migrate over. Uh, so definitely check that out. Yeah, just a quick add-on from on October 9th, we will have the last um, snapshot for the old uh, model where you have SPERP. Um, and then we have like those four days where you have time to migrate over to VEPERP where there's no cooldown period. And then we suggest you move over and lock at least 10 VEPERP before Thursday to um, be included in the next um, distribution. All right. Great advice. Yeah, so if you've been waiting for that moment to move from SPERP, the old staking, to the new staking, this is probably a good chance. Also, uh, fees on Ethereum have been pretty low, so it's a, a good chance to claim some of your old uh, stake perp rewards as well. Uh, I saw some somebody actually claim for three, three GUE, three GUE. I was really impressed with that. <laughs> well done, whoever they were. I'm not sure anyone imagined at this time we would see fees that low ever again, but there you go. All right. So another thing that uh, I think we've talked about it before, but it's finally uh, finally done, or finally we'll, we'll get finished. Actually, the main contracts are already deployed on this uh, Gurley testnet. Uh, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, the sort of periphery sort of secondary contracts are in the process of being deployed if they haven't been deployed already. So that's uh, just about done. And if anyone is wondering how exactly to pronounce this, uh, Leonie, can you help us out? <laughs> yeah, it's pronounced girly. Um, I think it was they participated in the ETH Berlin hackathon some years ago. I'm not sure which year it was. Um, and they called it girly after like a park and um, a station that is in Berlin. So yeah, usually you would spell it with the O with the two dots on top, like U. <laughs> All right, so any ETH, ETH fan, if they're visiting Berlin, I guess should make a, a pilgrimage to the park. <laughs> All right, in the marketing and partnerships news, uh, we've got an upcoming Twitter space with D commas. Actually, I will be participating in that. So if you're not tired of me yet, you can, uh, you can check that out next week. Leonie, do you know any details about it? Um, most likely it's going to happen on Wednesday. We're still finalizing the exact time and date, so we'll, we'll send out announcements shortly. All right, definitely keep an eye out for that. And uh, Perp Interactive. Uh, actually, our original plan for Perp Interactive was to do it for 10 weeks and see how it went. And I believe this uh, upcoming session this week will be the last one of the, that batch of 10. Uh, and it will be with... Uh, the amazing Houston. So I highly recommend you check that out. Houston, uh, can you give us any teasers? You must come out. This is, you know, 
this is the final episode of season 10. So uh, season one, I mean. So this is the 10th <laughs> episode of season one. You got to come out, check it out. So yeah, we're going to oh, you know, have fun. <laughs> Last time that's, after that's we, awesome. know, we, we did it, we had a, a really good turnout. So I so hope more folks came out. Again, we'll we talk about perp, you know, everything perp. We, uh, well, talk about the markets as well. Markets as well. Um, but, uh, you know, if you're new to perp, really good event to uh, um, learn the fundamentals, kind of, you know, uh, get the basics. And of course, uh, you know, you throw some uh, trick questions at me and I, you know, I make me look stupid. So <laughs> that's another bonus. That's a, that sounds like so much fun. If it wasn't in the middle of the night, I would definitely attend that. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So the current plan is to continue with the Perp Interactive. So we highly recommend everyone to come and check it out. Um, like Houston says, this will be the last episode of season one, uh, but there will most likely be a season two. Um, so, I'll put yeah. a cliffhanger in this, this last one. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Is it going to happen? Right. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Well, definitely check that out then. It sounds uh, pretty intense. <laughs> All right, Houston, maybe you can also uh, let us know about the Perp Trivia Night that's coming up. Yeah, I'll chime in on this one. So, yeah, it's, uh, you know, good market vibes, you know, good vibes only here. So we're trying to have a bit of fun. If, so, uh, if you're part of the Perp community, definitely come on out uh, this Friday night. Um, again, depending where you are. But uh, uh, this Friday, it is at 8. No, is it? Sorry, it's, I think it was 8 uh, UTC, right? So whatever that translate, translates to you. To you. Um, Basically, it's a trivia contest. So it's our first time trivia contest. Uh, one of our um, community members, Solace, will be hosting it. So if you think you know about Perpetual, if you think you know about DeFi, if you think you know about crypto, then come join us. Yeah, 8 p.m. Oh, Eastern. Okay, EDT. Thought it was UTC, but EDT. Um, you know, get a chance to uh, yeah to to win some cool prizes, and of course, flex your trivia muscles and 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 you know. And also get a chance to uh, to get some bragging rights. So so there you go. Come on out. So depending on where you live, it might be trivia morning. Yeah, it could be trivia morning. Yeah. <laughs> that would, that'll be eight eight in the morning for me. I'll I'll see if I can uh, join. That'd be pretty cool. I've never yeah. done trivia morning. That'll be a new thing. <laughs> yeah, coming up because it won't be a long one because obviously trivia games don't last that long. So you know, come hang out. Um, yeah, bring bring a beverage and. Uh, yeah, win some cool prizes. Sounds good. All right, uh, we've got some uh, stats, protocol stats update. Uh, Leonie, can you fill us in on this one? Yeah, sure. So we hit a nice new uh, milestone, 25K traders, distinct traders in total on Perp V2. And um, part of that were like 6K unique traders in the last seven days which um, if you have reference is quite a high number. And I think um, the Optimism Quests brought a new, lot of new people in, which is great. So they can explore Perp and hopefully they stay around and trade more. And um, in total, we also have now more than 6 million trades that were done in Perp V2. Yeah, that's really awesome. And we definitely did see an uh, uptick in the amount of users coming in for the Optimism Quest. So that's definitely a pretty cool marketing campaign that they did. It also helped us uh, identify some issues we had with our uh, UI that the dev team has been working very hard on. So having all those users come in, uh, the RPCs were getting hammered pretty, pretty heavily and uh, causing some issues. So we've been working hard on that to optimize the platform even more. So uh, yep, nice little silver lining there. All right, so that's about it for the community call. There's uh, just the last, uh, the, the final further reading section. Leonie, can you uh, walk us through this? Mm -hmm. Sure, so the first one, what is EIP 4844? It is a little bit more technical, um, but I think Jamie, our content writer, who's writing all the articles, has done a good job in trying to make it understandable for someone who has never heard about it. So um, EIP 4844, is part of the Shanghai update, which is the next big step for Ethereum, which is scheduled for March um, 2023. And it will enable greater scalability, but also reduce roll-up costs by 10 to 100 times. So that's where it becomes relevant for us because it will eventually, hopefully, make um, trading on Perp V2 a lot cheaper. 
So if you're interested to learn more about it, um, I suggest to check that out. And then the next one about automated market makers. Um, so as you might know, Perp was kind of the pioneer of the virtual automated market maker and is built on top of Uniswap, um, which is also a market maker. And it was kind of an innovation in DeFi to facilitate trading on chain um, and kind of replace the order book model. So um, the order book is replaced with a liquidity pool in an automated market maker where you have liquidity providers that um, supply the assets you can trade against. And in turn, they are compensated with part of the trading fees. So yeah, if you want to learn more about it, about the history, like Uniswap, Banker, and how it works on Perp 2 I suggest you read that one. And then the next one is about um, crypto trading strategies and gives kind of an idea how you can set up a trading strategy because as you probably know, risk management is important and you should have a plan for when you start trading. I think Houston probably can also give some tips about that. Um, but the article introduces kind of scalping, day trading, swing trading, position trading, and also passive trading strategies like, for example, dollar cost averaging. So if you're new to trading, I think that's a good introductory article to kind of learn about those different strategies. Yeah, and the last one, DuneCon Digest, um, is from September. DuneCon was a conference um, organized by Dune Analytics. It was the first conference they organized. Then two team members, Jamie and I, we were there, and it was actually a great conference. So shout out to Dune Analytics um, for organizing such a great um, event. And the article gives just basically an intro to some of the talks, um, kind of an overview what they were about. And yeah, I think it was super a super interesting conference. And also Dune Analytics, if you don't know what it is, it's kind of a Web3 data analytics platform. And we also use it, for example, for our product stats update to kind of analyze the data that there is. Awesome, uh, Leone, thanks so much. That was... Uh... Yeah, really great uh, rundown of those articles. So if any of those topics interest you, definitely check those out. OK. All right, so we're done with the uh, uh, going over the news from this uh, past couple of weeks and the upcoming stuff as well. So I'll just stop sharing my screen. And uh, yeah, we'll move on. I guess uh, we should open up for questions. And at the same time, maybe I can get Houston to let us know about the NFT for the call. Of course, the most important part, the NFT drop. So um, this is, yeah, NFT number 36 already. It's pretty pretty crazy. So um, at some point, I'd love to see how many folks have collected all these NFTs. So maybe we could run some sort of um, do an analytics report or some sort of report to see you know, all the folks who have uh, had a chance to actually collect all of these. But yeah, it's NFT drop time or OAT drop time. So uh, in a few moments, um, we're going to post a link in the chat pod. And that link is actually to a Google survey. So um, it's optional for you to fill out the survey, but we'd love to hear your feedback on how we're doing with this call, how we can improve it. And of course, um, you know, what other things uh, are of interest to you. So if you could just spend a bit of time to fill out that form, it would be much appreciated. And then right below the, uh, right inside the uh, the first block of that uh, survey, there's a link to the actual NFT. So, you know, I'm talking a lot here. I'm going to just drop the, uh, the link now. So uh, if, if Leona, you can copy and paste that link into the YouTube chat, that'd be great. And so once again, yeah, the window, the claim window is open for two hours. So plenty of time for folks to fill out the form as well as to claim the NFT and uh, keep that safe in your wallet. As always, if you care about anonymity, create a fresh wallet for yourself and uh, and claim that NFT or OAT there. All right, but uh, maybe one day we'll, we'll do something special and see who has the most claimed you know, um, NFTs and yeah, maybe we gotta start giving you some shout outs, folks who who have who play many of these. Yeah. At the very least. And there For sure is. anyone who's collected them all up to this point uh, deserves a shout out of some kind. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So we got that out there. Um, if you have any questions, just pop them in the YouTube chat. Or you can put them on Discord as well, I think. I don't know if we have a, a channel for that. Probably not, but uh, let's see. I 
Notice we have one person in the perp cafe for some reason. I'm not sure if they're expecting something exciting to happen. <laughs> anyway, if you'd rather ask your question on Discord, you can uh, put it in the general chat and we'll be happy to answer it. All right, so we do actually have one question already, which is how do I monitor the insurance fund uh, from invest? Engineer, invest engineer official, I guess. Uh, that's a pretty interesting name. In engineer investor. All right, so how do you monitor the insurance fund? Well, actually, that's uh, a great question. And Leone just mentioned Dune Analytics. And we have a Dune Analytics dashboard. And on that, you can see the insurance fund. So let me just get the link. All right, so I put the link in the YouTube chat, although you're going to see the link before you hear me saying this. But there it is. And if you scroll down, there is a insurance fund balance chart. And currently, actually, I have a feeling that this chart needs, it has some uh, slight update that needs to be done that the team is working on. Because as you may know, uh, like we mentioned during the call, uh, we completed the link between the insurance fund and the clearinghouse. So some funds will be moved from the insurance fund to the clearinghouse. Uh, although I'm not exactly sure. It's possible that this chart is up to date. Anyway, you can def definitely keep an eye on this. However, actually, this is not enough information to, to know uh, when the insurance fund is is full and USDC distribution will begin because you also need to know the open interest on the platform. We have been requested many times to provide this open interest information and we definitely want to do it, but it's actually not that easy to calculate. So we don't have like a simple way of offering this information at the time being, but the team is working on it. Uh, it's a, a request that we have for our data team and they are working on that. So eventually it will be available. We just have to figure out how to present it in a way that's you know accessible and also accurate and so on. All right, as far as I know, that's the only question we've received so far. So if people have any other questions they'd like to ask, uh, this is the time to ask away. While we're waiting, I'll just mention that uh, earlier in the call, uh, we talked about uh, some RPC issues where the UI uh, app.perp.com was either inaccessible or unreliable. And uh, sort of uh, the team actually changed the, the RPCs that are used to supply data to the web interface itself. Uh, and users can also choose another uh, RPC for their own um, wallets. If you're using MetaMask, it's fairly simple to set that up uh, with the private or alternate RPC. There's some different RPC links. Uh, I'm not really familiar with any RPC links that I personally would trust like directly without doing a little bit of research beforehand. But we do have an article that I'll just grab. Let's see. We have an article that was written by uh, one of our community members with basic instructions for setting up a free private RPC on Alchemy. And we've been recommending this for a lot of users and I think it works pretty well. So uh, let's paste that in the chat. So for someone who's like really new to perp, what, what does that mean to them? So uh, if they have to change their RPC, what are you referring to there? Yeah, that's a great question, Houston. All right, so any uh, any any wallet or any DeFi web interface has to somehow connect to the blockchain to uh, either receive data from the blockchain about you know the state of things or to send data to the blockchain if they want to make a transaction. And uh, 
RPC is actually kind of the wrong word. It should be a node. Basically, you're connecting to a blockchain node, so an Ethereum node or Optimism node. And that node will provide an interface, which is called an RPC, to let people interact with it. So most projects like that launch a, a network like Optimism will provide a public RPC. Uh, they're basically providing a node service for people to connect to. And obviously, since it is a public public service, you know sometimes there's a lot of public trying to use that service. <laughs> so, uh, if that's the case, then you know you're just you have to get in line with a lot of people, and that may not be ideal. So you have a few different choices. Like you could run your own node, which can be pretty challenging, especially for new users. I know myself; I don't run a node. I think that's uh, something I don't really have time to do. So there are different options, though. Um, other people run public nodes that they allow you to access. Like I noticed, actually, just in our uh, Discord support channel, somebody pasted a link to a node. The risk you run of using someone else's node is you don't know, like, if you do that and you're connecting to their node, it's possible that they could send you data that's not, not accurate uh, on purpose or by mistake. Uh, so yeah it it does reduce your security a little bit so it's always better to use the public node or what you can do is uh, use a node provided by a reputable node supplier and there's a bunch of these in the ethereum ecosystem like uh, infura or quick node or alchemy and the link i posted in the chat to the mirror article uh, describes how to set up this free rpc with alchemy and if, if all of the things I've been saying don't make any sense to you, actually, don't worry. Just check out that article. Literally, in like two minutes, you can set up a node, set up the RPC, sorry, and connect MetaMask to that. Uh, it's, it's surprisingly simple, I think. Anyway, if you were going through the article and you, you, you know, come up with any issues, you can't figure out what's, you know, what you're supposed to do, uh, obviously, as I always recommend, come to our Discord, let us know. We'll be happy to help you out with that. Houston, does that uh, answer the yeah, question? That was a good answer. That was a good answer, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. All right, I'm just looking at our Discord general channel to see if there's any other questions. There's a guy with a question and showing a, a screenshot, but I, I don't see the thing he's mentioning on there. So I don't know what that's about. Anyway. Oh, you don't have we don't seem to have many questions this time, uh, so maybe we will call it a day a little early. What do you guys think? Yeah, let's, let's call it. Yeah, let's wrap it Sounds up. Sounds good. <laughs> All right. Well, it's great to see everyone, and uh, yeah, looking forward to the next one in two weeks. But uh, also, don't forget to check out Houston's uh, Perp Interactive. It's tomorrow for some people, or maybe the next day for other people. No, I guess it's tomorrow for everybody, right? Yeah. Excellent. So definitely check out that Perp Interactive. Uh, and of and course, game on Friday. Go. Yeah, the yes, game yes. on Friday. I'll be there as well, so you can try to outcompete me. So, so yeah, be there or be hey. square. <laughs> well, sounds like a challenge, folks. <laughs> All right. <laughs> On that note, uh, we will call it a day or a night. Uh, great to see you all, and looking forward to seeing you again in two weeks. Thanks, everyone. Ciao.